Hello and welcome to the third episode of Baldur's Gate. I'm Shox and today our adventure really begins. We just had to witness the slaughtering of Gorion and we now know that someone is after our life. Imwen joined us as well and she told us about um, a letter that... or she, actually, I think she told us before already, but now she told us that the letter was probably on Gorion's body and we should probably take a look at it. So let's go up there to the site of the the actual ambush and it's kind of weird that we're so close to it and even though the guy was clearly after us we're just like a little bit away and and he didn't find us but nonetheless let's get all this stuff um Sigorian left us a, a a belt it looks like and the three other guys he killed before he was killed also left some stuff around that will be very useful to us, even if it's just for reselling. All right, so um, let's get on our way further. Oh, a who's what is that? A wolf. Crap. All right, first I'm gonna set the script of every character to none. Because I do not want them to do anything on their own. I, I literally want them to stand still unless I give the instruction to do anything. Yep, and this gone. is exactly what we're going to do now. Okay, so he got one dart uh, thrust in. And I think at this time it, it's just better to uh, completely switch over to dual wielding. And just embrace that because he's better at it anyway and I don't think we well, we might have gotten another hit in and yeah that that's the end of the wolf wasn't as bad as I expected it to be there's no loot for us from the wolf oh hello who are you sorry chum but I can't stop to chat there's been another caravan raided northeast of Berigost, and I must report of these dire straits to the Grand Dukes. Messenger's work is never done. Okay, be, be on your way. Alright, let's see um, what's down there. I want to discover all four sides of the map. So, oh, hello there. Montalon, you are so aggravating. Tis disturbing to my demeanor. A child wandering the wilderness? Surely you must be none too bright to be traveling these roads. Ah, uh, and they look a bit scuffed too. A fine pair of troubles all your own. Indeed. I can offer you healing potions if you wish, as a token of goodwill. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, you can never have too many healing potions. I'd be grateful for any assistance. Nothing to fear from these simple potions. Now they'll even hold you in debt. Though your conscience knows otherwise. Just like all good people. Perhaps as a payment, you would go with us to Nashkill. It is a troubled area, and we mean to investigate some disturbing rumors surrounding the local mines. Some acquaintances are very concerned about the iron shortage. Specifically, where to lay blame in the matter. You would be useful, though. I'll not hold you to it. We are to meet the mayor of the town. A man named Baron Gustkill, I believe. Your conscience be your guide. Um, I, I think we have to go to Nashkill anyway. But let, let's... Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we have to meet... Uh, Chihira and Khalid anyway before. So I would join with you, but I must meet someone first. Perhaps you will go with me? We've precious little time, but it's best to travel accompanied. I right, we'll go with you. You ask for your time, though. Sweet, so we have uh, two more uh, team members, or party members. Uh, one is a fighter thief. Not that useful, again, as we already are a fighter thief, and Imwen is a thief. So uh, we'll see about that, and, and we might get rid of Imwen at some point, 
depending how strong our party is, depending how valuable she is as a damage dealer, um, just so she doesn't eat up experience points uh, or a share of the experience points if we actually have to ditch her down the rope because she's just not adding enough value to the party. All right, and Xar is a necromancer. That's very good because we have no magic stuff in our party so far. So no mage, no necromancer, no nothing. Uh, let me also really quickly disable all the scripts for those guys so they just don't run into combat blindly, especially for Xar, because if you look at it, he has 4 HP. 4 HP, that's basically, in other words, nothing. That's like one hit or like one and a half hits. So it's very important that he doesn't just start charging into the enemy and uh, considering he, I think, has a, equipped a, a dagger, we really, really, really don't want him to go anywhere near those guys. So first you get a dart so you can stay in the back. And let's say what things you have as spells with you. Larlock's Minor Drain. Okay, so we already know that. And Chill Touch. Oh, we already know that too. So basically we have two uh, rolls of spells that we already know. So why don't we just take a look at those? Chill Touch. When the caster completes a spell, a blue glow encompasses his hand. This energy attacks the life force of any living creature upon which the wizard makes a successful melee attack. Um... I don't know, like considering, as I said, he is 4 HP, I really want him to be as far away as possible from anything melee. So, let's go on. Larlock's Minor Drain. With this spell, the wizard drains the life force from a target and adds it to his own. The, target, the targeted creature suffers 4 damage, while the mage gains 4 hit points. If the mage goes over his maximum hit points total with this spell, he loses any extra hit points after one turn. Um, I'd say they're not particularly useful than like a last second save if he actually got attacked because four damage uh, if we look at our if we look at our weapon here uh, this one is 1d8 so it's 1 2 a damage and so this one's four yeah the average might be four here as well but the potential is way bigger here and we can just reuse it and reuse and reuse it every round where this spell we can use twice. So I don't think the benefit is worth it. Let's take another look. Um, I'd say we put the healing potions in our quick save or in our quick use slots. Um, I think he can use a bow. Perfect. So we give him a bow so he can attack from the distance. The damage should be the same. 1d6 piercing and arrows or 1d6 missile. Um, and I think that that's about it. Um, we can do the magic missile for Imran into the quick item slot. And I think we're ready to uh, continue our journey to, um, how is it called? The friendly arm in, right? All right, let's check out the, the four corners of the map because how this engine works is when you travel, you actually have to physically go to the edge of the map to discover things that are below, above, or to the left or right of you. So right now, we, we only, uh, we didn't know about High Hedge, but now because we looked at the south corner, or the south edge of the map, we discovered that we can actually go to High Hedge here. Uh, we don't know how to get to the Friendly Arm in yet, so I, I assume we have to go to the right side. And I also want to check the top side is if if anything is up here left of the friendly arm in. So I think we can just click to the right and you see this piece of forest here uh, appeared. We just discovered it and we didn't see it by going to the south edge of the map. We had to specifically go to the eastern edge of the map to discover that way to the east. So uh, let's basically go up again all the way and see if we find anything at the northern edge of the map and then we're ready to go and continue our journey to uh, go towards the Friendly Arm Inn and meet Khalid and Shahira. I hope we don't run into anything too dangerous. 
considering we're all basically at our at the very 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 beginning of our journey even though i think Bardash has pretty good armor he's still probably incredibly weak just because you know we're we're level one and what's our thaco is it still 20. Hmm. Anyhow, we have, we have only 13 hit points, even though it's like three times as much as our mage. I don't think this is a lot of hit points. So we have to be careful. And we didn't discover anything in the north. So let's just go oh, cool. to the friendly, uh, oh, to the forest. Oh, there, wanderer. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. It's been nigh unto a 10 days since I've seen a soul walking this road. And I've been without decent conversation since. Trailing nowadays appears to be the domain of either desperate or the deranged. If thou wouldst pardon my intrusion, may I inquire which pertains to thee? Um. I mean, we wouldn't be that arrogant if we were like, yeah, I'm not gonna listen to strangers, excuse me. Uh, because we are actually pretty desperate. You know, we, we know someone is after us. And I think we we can take any help we we can get. Even though there were assassins sent after us, usually they don't just talk to us and be like, oh, let, let me chit chat a little bit, get your um, trust and then just backstab you. They were like, oh, I see you, I'm gonna kill you. So I don't think he is anything necessarily really bad in mind. I, I think we just say a fair bit of desperate actually. Might you know the way to the friendly arm in? was told it, I might find I might find some friends there that I would the inn is but a short distance to the north and its doors are open to all I have no doubt that thy friend shall be there waiting with open arms my sympathies for any hardship the rope may have inflicted upon thee though I am certain everything shall turn out for the best my but I have wasted too much of thy time and said too much already I shall take my leave and wish thee all the best. All right, have a good journey, old man. Lion's Way, Candle Keep to the west, Coast Way to the east. See, so, yeah, I think, um, considering the game told us right away, hey, go north, don't, don't even bother going east. Um, and, and I do not really trust in the strength of our party yet. And I mean, maybe I'm just like too careful here. I played this game the first time. I heard it is very, very hard. So I don't know if I should just um, run around and try my luck. So let's take a look. Um, the back, as usual, oh, goes into attack mode. And you wait. Oh, that was it? Is he dead? All right. <laughs> that was easy, but there's another one. And that was exactly what I was talking about before. If we would have blindly charged to the east, running into this Gibberling, uh, we would have had to fight all of them at once. Now, because we waited, uh, we only fight one at a time. Um, and this is glitchy. All right, I just take all of them and attack. And that is the end of this Giverling as well. Uh, well, let's just take a careful peek over here. Maybe there's something of value. The Giverling didn't drop anything, so there's no real loot for us. Um, just poke a little bit over here. All right. Let's just go to the friendly arm in and find Khalid and Shahira. We arrive at the mighty castle, the friendly arm in. Yes. It's nighttime already. So it's time to go inside and, and find our friends and maybe go to rest. I should have joined the army. Welcome to the friendly arm. I trust you know the rules of conduct within. I know which rules suit me. 
And which ones don't? Ah, uh, that's that's, you know, we we're not in position to, you know, be be a total, um, you know, to to completely ignore all the rules in there and be like, hey, you want to mess with me? Because we're very weak, so weak. So um, I would say certainly, common sense rules the day within the friendly arm. Good then. Sure, you stay. I mean, common sense for us as a thief might be a little bit different from common sense of non thieves, so, um, you know, I, I told him common sense. So let's just see uh, what is in here. Hello there. Yes? Hey there. You knew here, aren't you? Could I trouble you a moment? Hmm. I, I don't think we're like. If it's a certainly milady, I, I think we consider ourselves to be lower than her, which I don't think Bardash takes kindly. He's like, you know, I, I work hard for what I am. I, I, I don't think you're higher than I am just because you wear certain clothing. Tell me what you need, but make it quick. Yeah, I think you'll be fine. I need someone to go club some heads for me. I was ambushed by a band of hogoblins. Hobgoblins within sight of this inn's walls. Rump me blind, they did, and I want to return the favor. I don't care about most of my things, but I want to get my ring back. My father gave it to me, you understand? What is in it for me? Hmm, huh, nothing. I have no gold to give you. I was just robbed, remember? You'll be doing it out of the goodness of your heart. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean... I think we, on the one side, we don't have time. You know, someone's after us. Someone's after our life. But on the other hand, you know, someone was just robbed and, and it never hurts to make friends in a new place. And the friendly arm in seems to be one of those places that, you know, is still kind of a safe haven for people to do business and come together. So I will do this for you. I thank you. The creatures were just north of the inn. I swear I could almost see them from the upper rooms. Bring my ring back here when you get it. You'll know it when you see it. It's a flame dance ring and very striking. All right, so we picked up another quest. A simple task. So who are you? Hello there. Damn it! My plow broke apart like it had rusted out in a single overnight. How's a man supposed to get any work done and make his living? Can't keep prices down if I have to plan everything by hand. So, yeah, you hear everywhere you hear of this iron shortage and all the tools and swords and, and all the iron items seem to be breaking or something at least is going on. What now, I wonder? Hmm, interesting. So she just went away, so let's disappear. Don't it failed. Don't. Hmm. All right, now we are disappeared in the shadows, and I can steal a bit. And I don't know, like, does... I don't know if hide in the shadows is if someone can see me stealing, so I, I just take... It fails, I don't know why it failed. Someone's sleeping, and she's in another room, so I should be safe taking this. Um... Yeah, but I, I cannot lockpick it. All right, um, there's nothing else to take. I, I don't think I'm, my skills are good enough to pickpocket the sleeping dude. And I mean, I can try. Nah, never mind. We're not that evil. Um, we're a fighter thief. We're, we're mostly, as I said, desperate here. And we can eat all the friends we get. So we don't want to piss off. The first people we see without knowing them or knowing their background and see if they might be useful at some point. Hello, pal. Hey there, newcomer. You'll do fine here at the Friendly Arm, as long as you don't get on the bad side of Bentley and Galena. Just a friendly bit of advice for her, but for the bunch of you. Uh, we don't intend to get on anyone's bad side. That's good, pal. I'm glad you're not the troublemaking kind that mercenaries usually turn out to be. All right, um, like nothing more for us to, to get here. Done and done. 
done and done. All right, let's see uh, what's up here. And then really, let's quickly go to the Friendly Arm Inn and find Khalid and Shahira and complete our party so we can uh, then continue. Used to be a bandit, I was. More money there than in the mines of Nashville, that's for sure. Probably less danger too, from the sounds of it. What's so dangerous about the Nashville mines? Because we heard a lot about what's going on in Nashville. Well, if you believed every tale you heard, you'd have to say the king of the nine hells himself were down at the bottom of it, smoking a pipe and making the place comfortable. To be honest, I don't know what's down there. All I know is that a lot of the folks who work in that infernal place don't ever make it back up to the surface. Well, that doesn't sound too friendly. Can't open that one. All right. There's all the commoners. Um, let's talk to the guard. Hello. There's to be no fighting or stealing within sight of the walls of the friendly army. Aggressors will be punished to the full extent of frontier law. Okay. Well, let's just not get caught, I guess. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. I've not seen you here before today. What brings you to the friendly arm? I'm here to meet some friends. Oh, you must be who I'm to meet then. I will take you to your friends, but first I should be sure you're the correct person. Is your name Bardash? Hmm, how do you know my name? Sorry, but, but no. I don't think you're the person I'm supposed to meet. Really? I would back to differ. You fit the description, so I think it would be safe to assume you're the one I seek. Don't move. I have something for you. Ah, oh, God. Uh, another assassin. All right. Let's club you to yep. pieces. Yes. Everybody, on to him. Kill him. Why are you running away? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just kiting us. And thank God the guards were helping us as well. So that was pretty quick. And he had a ton of stuff on him. He had a letter, three spells, a quarter staff, and some money on him. So let's take a look. What does the letter say? Oh, that's Gorion. Let's first go inside so the battle music goes away and I can read the letter in peace. Bounty notice. Be it known to all those of evil intent that a bounty has been placed upon the head of Bardash, the foster child of Gorion. Last seen in the area of Candlekeep, this person is to be killed in quick order. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 200 coins of gold. As always, any that reveal these plans to the force of law shall join the target in their fate. Well, great. More and more of these things keep popping up, so someone really, really, really wants us dead. And that is not a nice thing, seriously. Why? Not cool. All right. Um, I can't stand the way roads are cut off these days. My uncle's in Baldur's Gate and I can't get there to see him. How come the roads are cut off? We have been the past few months. The road are crawling with brigands and bandits after every scrap of iron you get on you. Surely you must have fled some on your trip here. Unless you came by the West Road, that is. Why is the West Road still open? If there's ever a book shortage, that road to Candlekeep will be the most dangerous of them all, I assure you. But those folks after all are of the metal, so they're sticking mainly to the larger trade routes between Baldur's Gate and Am. And guess what? This here in is smack dab in the middle of it all. Hmm. Well, so far actually our traveling was safer than being inside um, the cities. Because people try to kill us left and right all the freaking time. Kinda gets annoying after time. Alright, let's talk to Bentley Mirshade. 
Iron is the lifeblood of this whole region and it's sure painful when it gets scarce. So what can I do for you? Oh, what do you have to sell? Oh, so he can sell me uh, sleeping quarters. And we can get rumors by drinking beer and get drunk. And there's no rumors. Yeah, we drank a lot and nobody's like telling us anything. <laughs> there's nothing going on and I think we're drunk. All right, let's sell all the things we do not need. We do need the long sword, uh, dagger, morning star, armor. All the things basically that we found, um, we can just sell because we really don't have a really use for them. Uh, but we got some money, so we might be able to outfit our uh, people a little better. Especially him, if we can get him a really good shield, he can be... Uh, another frontline warrior that, um, so, do you have anything to sell? No. So Bardosh and Monteron can kind of switch out who is tanking um, if one guy's HP get too low. But we'll do that afterwards, after we complete our party. And Khalid and Chir are down here. Please, Dorn, you have a name. You must be important. Let me talk to you. Mm, it's about time. Bring me another flagon of ale. Wow. Hmm, it's about time, Half Orc. Bring me another flagon of ale. I think you're mistaking me for someone else. Then why do you bother me? Be gone. <laughs> wow. He is not a friendly guy to talk to. Okay, there's a chest back here, actually. Let's take a look at the chest. And I think it's okay just to walk up to the chest. Oh, okay, it's locked. So I think if the chest wouldn't be locked, we would be free to take stuff from it. And let's just talk to both of them. Okay. C calm yourself, dear. We must proceed c c carefully. Something about you is f familiar, child. Your manner reminds me of Sage, I know, but, but by the name of Gorion. It's almost a slight on him, but I see it too. Chihira, m mind your m m manners. Th this must be the child that Gorin wrote of so often. We're old friends of your adopted father. He's not with you? I must assume the worst. He would not permit his only child to wander without his accompaniment. If, if he has passed, we share your loss. Gorin often said that he worried for your safety, even at the expense of his own. He also wished that Khalid and I would become your guardians. If you should ever meet an untimely end. However, you're much older now, and the choice of your companion should be your own. We could t travel with you until you get settled, help you find a lot in life. It would be a fitting last service to Gorion, but we should first go to Nashko. Khalid and I look into local concerns, and there are rumors of strange things happening at the mines. No doubt you have heard of the iron shortage. You would do well to help us. It affects everyone, including you. We're to meet the mayor of the town, Baron Gastkill. Oh, so Xar and Chihira, both basically everyone in our party except Uman wants to go to Nashkill and meet Baron Gastkill. Uh, and I certainly want them to join. And I think they are good, Imwen is good, and they are evil. So we really have to uh, be careful with our party and at some point make some decisions um, who we want to keep and, and see if we can manage them. We are neutral, so we don't really care, but we'll see. I'm already going to Nashville. My current companions wish to visit there as well. Indeed, interesting. In that case, I think we should definitely travel as one. We can never be too careful about the dangers of the open road, wherever they may spring from. All right, great. So now we have our full party. I think the maximum is six people in our party. So uh, first thing, as usual, disable their scripts. Boom. None. And Khalid also script. None. So Khalid is a fighter. And Chihira is a fighter druid. So we are very, very fighter heavy. 
Uh, Fighter Druid. Druid is also more like a healing mage. And he's just a pure fighter. Just like, go to the front line and slice and dice things to pieces. Which is good. Alright, so we have a bunch of things he can actually learn. Armor. Armor is very good for us. <clears throat> By means of this spell, the wizard creates a magical field of force that serves if it were scale mail armor. It is cum cumulative with dexterity and, in the case of fighter mages, with the shield bonus. The armor spell does not hinder movement, adds no weight or encumbrance, does not prevent spell casting. It lasts until successfully dispelled or until the duration runs out. So I assume if I cast armor onto someone wearing armor, um, it should add up. I hope. And I just wrote it to my spell book, which means now I can, um, when I sleep, memorize it. And all the memorized spells I can actually use in battle. And I only have two slots here, as you can see, and we didn't unlock any of those yet. I have only two slots, which, which means I only can cast two spells until I sleep again. So we have to pick and choose very carefully uh, which spells we want. The next one is Magic Missile. Use of Magic Missile spell, one of the most popular first level spells, creates up to five missiles of magical energy that dart forth from the wizard's fingertip and unerringly strike their target with must be a creature of some sort. Each missile inflicts 1d4 plus 1 points of damage. For every two extra levels of experience, the wizard gains an additional missile. He has two at third level, three at fifth level, fourth at seventh level, and up to a total of five at ninth level. Let's write it down. And also, it shall be noted that writing magic can fail. And I will not quick save before I level up to make sure we get the maximum hit points. And I also will not quick save before trying to inscribe thing or write magic into our book. Just because. If we fail, we fail in that. And so shall it be. The last spell, Burning Hands. When the wizard casts a spell, a shadow of searing flame shoots from his fingertips. The wizard's hand must be held so as to send forth a fan-like sheet of flames. His thumbs must touch each other and the fingers must be spread. The burning hands send out flame jets of 5 feet length in a horizontal arc of about 120 degrees in front of the wizard. The target suffers 1d3 points of damage, plus 2 points for each level of the caster, a maximum of 1d3 plus 20 points of fire damage. A creature that successfully saves versus a spell receives half damage. Well, all those spells are really not that powerful. Um, 1d3 is... I mean, all our swords and stuff do 1d8. And yes, um, you get plus 2 for each level, but we all level 1, so... You get 1d3 plus 2, so you get 3 to 5 damage. So I guess if if we level up to level 3, 4, 5, then this spell becomes you know, more powerful. But I hope that spells of level 2 or 3 itself will be much more powerful. Uh, but the thing is, we um, I think for every level we can memorize the spells for the level. So we have 2 level 1, I don't know level... I don't know how many level 2 and I don't know how, how many level 3. But we still keep the level 1s around just as a backup. So we can cast them and and I think that kind of makes them scale to higher levels so they're still useful. All right, let, let's take a look at your equipment and actually your spells as well. Um, Shahira has Armor of Faith. The caster of the Armor of Faith receives significant protection against melee and magical attacks. So this is armor on yourself. Bless. Upon uttering the Bless spell, the caster raises the morale of friendly creatures by plus one. Furthermore, it raises their attack and damage rolls by plus one. The caster determines at what range, up to 40 feet, the spell will be cast. At the instant the spell is completed, it affects all creatures in a 30-foot radius, centered on the point selected by the caster. Thus affecting creatures living in the area are still subject to the spell's effects. Those entering the area after the caster is completed are not. Alright, so... It casting time nine. I think this is a little over. Oh, it's nine seconds. I think so. That's that might be useful. It's just a plus one, but better than nothing. Cure light wounds. It is great. Like it just heals people. Detect evil. This spell discovers emanations of evil from any creature. An evil creature within the range of the spell will glow red briefly. 
I do not know how useful that spell is or how we would use it right now. Doom. This spell causes the feeling of doom to overwhelm the target. For the duration of the spell, the target receives the minus two penalty to all his rolls, including Thacko and saving throws. There's no saving throw for this spell. So minus two to all th uh, rolls is, I think, pretty good. So we, we have to see how which ones we actually um, take. Entangle, pretty clear, you know, we, we entangle someone um, at the spot where they are. And Shillelech, the spell enables the caster to create a magical cudgel that has a plus one bonus to its attack roll and inflicts 2d4 points of damage on opponents. Hmm, interesting. All right, so the default right now is uh, Cure Light Wounds twice and Entangle once. And I think that is a good combination. Um, I'm considering Bless, just because it buffs our, um, our team, or Doom, because it debuffs the enemy. But I don't know about that. Uh, I think this is a good combination. Uh, because she's a cleric, she should mainly stay in the background, do the healing, deal some damage, but be a support hero. And Khalid will be a frontline fighter. His specialty, a specialization, is in, or weapon proficiency, longsword, axe, and longbow. So we will probably give him a longbow just to get one shot in, and then switch to a longsword, which I think he already has. Very good. 1d8 slashing. Um, her weapon proficiency is in a club, quarter surfer sling. So if we find a club, and I don't know if this counts. Yes, as a oh we sold it okay I th we had like the f i think it was a flail so it might actually not count as one and while we're at it um he will be a frontline fighter so he gets some um healing potions too so i think this will be the lineup with both of them will stay in the back with him staying in the way 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 back and we should do probably this formation. Of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sounds good. He's way in the back protected. Uh, Imwen is also in the back. She's the support, which is good. So we have like the don't be in the first row of attack first. Then those two are the secondary, you know, damage shield slash tanks. And he's my main tank. And I think he also has the most... Oh, so... Khalid and Baradash have both 13 health, uh, hit points, which is very good. Jahira is next with 12, so we might switch her with uh, uh, Monteron for tanking, but we'll see about that. All right, so I think we completed our party. The next step is um, to get some equipment, but for now, let's just rest. And, I don't know, I mean, we have plenty of money, and I think we deserve a royal room to rest and recover. And that should be the end of episode 3. Thanks so much for watching, and have a good night.